In my last video I've shown you how you can solve the first layer of the Rubik's Cube. In that video here I will show you how you can solve the second layer of the cube by using commutators and conjugates. First I will show you what a commutator is. If A and B are some algorithms, then the commutator of A and B is the following. You use the algorithm A first, then the algorithm B, after that you reverse the algorithm A and then you reverse the algorithm B. That's the commutator of A and B. And by reversing I mean the following. If for example the algorithm A is move the upper layer to the right and then move the right face down, then the inverse algorithm would be the following. Move the right face up and then the upper layer to the left. So you not only reverse the steps of the algorithm, but also the order of the steps. I will now show you how you can use commutators to perform a so-called 3 cycle on the cube. A 3 cycle is a permutation that permutes exactly 3 pieces of the cube. The rest of the cube is unchanged. There are some conditions for performing a 3 cycle. One piece has to be in one layer and two other pieces in a different layer. I will call the first piece piece 1 and the two other pieces that have to be in the same layer piece 2 and piece 3. We will now use a commutator and I will explain how the algorithms A and B have to look like. The algorithm A is the algorithm that places piece 1 to the position of piece 2 without changing the other pieces in the layer where piece 2 and 3 are located. So the algorithm A puts piece 1 to the position of piece 2 without affecting the other pieces in that layer. The algorithm B moves piece 3 to the position 2. So it moves piece 3 to the position 2. Now that you know the algorithms A and B, you can perform the commutator. So you use A, then you use the algorithm B, then you reverse the algorithm A and then you reverse the algorithm B. After you are done, the result should look like that. Piece 1 has been moved to position 2, piece 2 has moved to position 3, and piece 3 has been moved to position 1. That's how you perform a 3 cycle. We will now use that knowledge to solve the second layer of the cube. Ok, let's take a look at the cube again. We want to solve these edge pieces here. So we want to solve the second layer. So first of all we look for one of the edge pieces in the top layer. Here is one. And that piece should go there. We want to place this piece there. This here is now piece 1. And these two pieces here 
are piece 2 and piece 3. Piece 1 is in a different layer than piece 2 and piece 3. And piece 2 and piece 3 are in the same layer. So we can perform a 3 cycle. The algorithm A moves piece 1 to position 2 without changing the other pieces in the second layer. That's not too difficult. We just do the following. We move or twist the left face up, then we twist the upper layer to the left and then we twist the left face down again. Now piece 1 is in the proper position and the other pieces in the second layer haven't changed. That was the algorithm A. The algorithm B moves piece 3 to position 2, which is extremely easy. The algorithm B is just that here. Now piece 3 is at the proper position. Now we have to reverse the algorithm A, which is that here. And then we have to reverse B, so that here. And as you can see, the 3 cycle had an effect on these 3 pieces. The rest of the cube is unchanged and that edge piece here is now solved. Ok, let's do this one more time. So here we have another edge piece in the top layer. That edge piece should go there. So we perform a 3 cycle on that 3 pieces. So this here is piece 1 and that here is piece 2 and that here is piece 3. Piece 2 and piece 3 are located in the same layer. Now we perform algorithm A. So the algorithm A puts that piece here in um, that position without changing the other pieces in the second layer. So we do the following, we move that here up then um, the upper layer to the right and then the right layer down again. So now this piece is positioned correctly and the other pieces in that layer haven't changed. Now we will use the algorithm B which is easy, it's just that here. Now we have moved piece 3 to position 2. Now we have to reverse the algorithm A which is that here. And then we have to reverse the algorithm B, which is that here. So you can see the 3 cycle had an effect on these 3 pieces and that piece is solved now. Now that piece here is in the right place but has the wrong orientation. So we have to move it up in the top layer first. To do so we will use a 3 cycle. So this here is now piece 1, that here is piece 2 and that here is piece 3. Um, we will use the algorithm A to put that piece here at the position of piece 2 without changing the top layer, without changing the other pieces in the top layer. This is done the following way. So this here down, then that way, and then up there. So this was the algorithm A. Now the algorithm B puts piece 3 to position 2, which is that here. Then we reverse the algorithm A, which is that here. And then we have to reverse the algorithm B, which is this here. And now we have put the piece that was originally there at this position here. So move it there. Okay.
OK, now we want to solve that last edge piece here. But we have a little problem now. If you permute these three pieces here, it will mess up that piece here, which is already solved. This is the time when conjugates come in handy. What is a conjugate? A conjugate is an algorithm C that is used right before the actual three cycle. It guarantees that the three cycle can be used without any problems and serves as some kind of preparation for the three cycle. After the three cycle, the algorithm C has to be reversed again. So in our case of the last edge piece, we want to save that already solved piece here. So we need a substitute for that piece here. Our conjugate looks like that. Now that piece is secure and we can use the three cycle on that three pieces here. Piece 1, piece 2 and piece 3. So that here is the algorithm A. Um, that here is the algorithm B. We reverse the algorithm A and we reverse the algorithm B and in the end we need to undo the algorithm C again, the conjugate. So we undo C which is that here. And you can see now we have solved the second layer completely. In the next video we will solve the last layer by using commutators and conjugates. If you liked this video, please consider subscribing to my channel. That would help a lot.